Hello, hello. In the last several videos, uh, I was using Jupyter Notebook from Anaconda, um, which is free as well, uh, to do all my recordings of machine learning algorithms. But turns out Google already has a SaaS fit solution. If we just simply Google Google Collab, C-O-L-A-B, you will get to this page. And here you can do you, you can create your no, notebooks, Jupyter notebooks, online for free. You don't have to install anything on your uh, computer at all. So I think going forward, I'm just going to use this. It's pretty fast. Uh, it's a little bit less um, intuitive, if you will, the interface, but it works. So I'm going to start with that. Uh, so I'm going to open a notebook that I already had made earlier to show you how it works. So in this one is a repeat of the KNN algorithm because the point of this video is actually to show you how Google Collab works versus Jupyter Notebook. So I'm gonna go through the steps again for KNN algorithms just to show you how Google Collab works. So this is a notebook that I created earlier today. Uh, you, we import, uh, this particular library from Google Collab's own library, um, just so we can upload files from, from my computers so that these images can be shown later in, in, this, web, in, in this video. So you just do an upload and you choose a file that you want to upload. And you have to remember the name of the file, put it in inside the single quotes. And the file shows up in this Jupyter Notebook, which is Google's version of it called Collab. So topic again today is Canon algorithm. I'm gonna go over um, that briefly because I already have another video on the same topic using Jupyter Notebook. So in this algorithm, you're given a data set and the new data point that it doesn't know how to classify, it classifies is based on K and you choose the K number K. Let's say in this case, we choose three. It's gonna take the nearest three nodes, uh, data points, of the given uh, given uh, data, the given instance of the data, and whichever is the majority of the class, it, it, the nearest k neighbors are, that's the classification this data point is going to get. To do this, we're going to let's run that, and then we're going to import a bunch of libraries from different um, different sets, and no need to go over them. It's just code that you can copy and paste. We're, we're just using open source, open, freely available open source libraries. From this particular library um, data sets, we're going to import the data for breast, breast cancer, and we're going to give the features, the variables, columns, um, X, and the target is the last variable, last feature, last data, data in last column data which has the actual result of the classification, like yes or no, or zero or one. And so that's X and Y, I'm gonna run that. Then we're gonna train the model using 80% of the data set. Here's 0 0.2 means leave 20% for testing the model once it's been, it has been trained and use the other 80% to actually train the model. And we're just gonna use the model that's openly available from these libraries. This random state means that if you, you don't have to have this variable in here, you can just take it out. But if you take it out, each time you run this, it creates a random set from the, from the data set to choose for training data set. So your results will vary just a little bit uh, based on that. So I put that in there, that way the results are always the same, uh, no, um, no surprises. So I'm gonna run that now. We're going to actually scale the data set. So scaling means normalization, means if your variables go from zero to 100, let's say that you, you want all of them to go from zero to 10, you're gonna take all the columns and make them go into zero to one. That way your calculations in the, in, in the steps below this will work. So scaling means normal, normalizing the data sets uh, into a particular range. And again, we use an openly available library for doing that. We set K to five. That means we're going to take the five nearest neighbor to classify whatever data we're working on at this time. So we're going to run that, and that work. And you can see it's pretty, it's pretty fast. So that's pretty good. Now this is where you actually predict 
the classification of the data sets whose target, that is to say the answer, where, what, what is the class going to be, yes or no, or what, zero or one, you're going to predict on those 20% of the data set using this particular, calling this particular function, right? And you see, you're calling this, calling this uh, on the data set for the testing, not for the training. So we're going to run that. Once you've done that, there are also functions available to test the accuracies. Uh, we're going to run those um, functions if we want to find accuracy um, for based on confusion metrics, which I, which I will talk about in just a minute. So we run that and we get these numbers. Before we look at the numbers, let's look at this image of confusion metrics. What this means is, this is, this is these are the ways you figure out how good your model worked. Now, how good mo your model work depends on how you define the success, right? So in, in a given data, um, it could be uh, positive or negative. If, if the true outcome was positive and your, your model predicted positive, that's a success for recall. If it's truly false and it got the false right, that's called precision. And the F score, score is basically a, a, a combination of the two. So it depends on the situation. Let's say that you, you were doing a liquid um, um, a neural algorithm for detecting uh, pedestrians crossing in front of your automated car, right? In that case, you want the re you want the recalls to be exactly precise, and depend on depending on um, in other cases where let's say you're doing a drug test, you don't want false negatives. Uh, you want uh, if you're willing to sacrifice some positive tests because you don't want to accuse people of doing drugs when they actually didn't do that. So that's what the numbers mean. Anyway, the point of this video is that uh, this tool from Google works pretty darn well and it's freely available, SaaS-based, web-based. You don't have to install anything at all on your computer. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please like and subscribe. That really helps helps my um, helps the YouTube's algorithm and helps me out a lot. And I will see you in the next video.